Hi everyone, welcome back to the next video of this entire series where we are talking about SharePoint Online. In the last video, we talked about hub sites in SharePoint Online. We learned what is a hub site, how to register site as a hub site. We learned how to associate a site with hub. We talked about hub site permissions. We talked about hub navigation, how to sync hub site permissions and how to create an approval workflow to associate a site with hub site. In this particular video, we are going to talk about SharePoint online permissions. We will learn how SharePoint permissions work. We will talk about the site groups and permission levels. We will talk about permissions inheritance and I will walk you through the SharePoint site permissions. SharePoint permissions is always a hot topic whenever we talk about SharePoint. So what exactly SharePoint permissions are? In nutshell, SharePoint permissions are the way to restrict access and control anything within a particular SharePoint site. But there's a lot in SharePoint permissions to play around. SharePoint permissions are very customizable that you can control anything on any level. In SharePoint Online, there are two components that construct the SharePoint permissions, site groups and permission levels. When we create a SharePoint site, be it a team site or a communication site, by default, we get three site groups, site owners, site members, and site visitors. These groups are basically used to categorize the users. A site owner has full control over the site. He can modify the site. He can modify the site content. He can manage the permissions and he can delete the site. The site members have edit permission on the site. A site member can edit the documents. He can upload the documents. He can edit the list items. He can delete the items. He can delete the documents, but he can't delete the site and he can't manage the permissions and the recycle bin. Whereas a site visitor is a read-only permission. A user who is part of site visitor group, he can view the site, he can view the documents within document library, he can download the documents, but he can't make any changes within the site. So these three groups are the default groups. Those are created when we create a SharePoint site but we can create multiple groups as per our requirement. Then we have permission levels. The permission levels are the collection of permissions. A permission level decide what exactly a user can do with a particular permission. There are five standard permission levels, full control, design, edit, contribute, and read. A user with full control permission will have full control over the site. A user who has design permission can view the site, he can customize the site, he can update the content, or he can approve the request. Similarly, a user who has edit permission, he can edit and delete list or the list items, and he can delete the documents. A user who has contribute permission, he can view the site content, he can add or update the list items, he can delete items and he can delete the documents. And the users who have read permissions, they can view the site content and they can download the documents, but they cannot make any changes within a particular site. You can assign these permission levels to the site groups or you can create a custom group. For example, we can create a group with name contribute and we can assign contribute permission to this particular group and then we can add a user within this group. We can create a separate group for site designers. Those will have only design permission on a particular site. Now the three groups that we discussed earlier, site owners, site members and site visitors, the site owner group has full control permission. That means the users who are part of the site owners group in a particular SharePoint site will have full control over that SharePoint site. The site members group has edit permission and the site visitors group 
has read permission. Now, apart from these five standard permission levels, we can create custom permission levels and we can assign these permission levels to the group of users. For example, we can create a permission level edit items. Then we will create a group and we will assign this permission level to this group. And then we can add the users within this group and the users will get edit items permission. Now these users can edit items within a particular list. They can edit document libraries and they can customize the web parts within the SharePoint site. Or you can create a permission, let's say create subsite, assign that permission level to a group of users and the users will get only the permission to create subsites. So the SharePoint permissions can be customized at any level. We can customize the SharePoint permissions as per our business requirements. Apart from the groups and permission levels, there are a lot of other things in SharePoint permissions to talk about. And we will discuss all these topics in detail in upcoming videos. But for now, I want to talk about permission inheritance. So what is permission inheritance? By default, a SharePoint site, list, and document libraries inherit the same level of permissions those are assigned on the site level. That means if a user has owner permission on a site or is a part of site owner group, that user will have owner permission on that particular SharePoint site. He will have owner permission on the list, on the list items as well. He will have owner permission on the document library and he will have owner permission on the files and the folders within the document library. Likewise, if a user is part of site member group, he will have added permission on the site. He will have added permission on the list and the items within the list. And he will have added permission on the document library and the files and folders within that document library. So this is called permission inheritance. The permissions, those are defined on the site level are being used by the list and the document libraries of that particular SharePoint site. But in SharePoint, we can break this inheritance. Let's assume we have a user who is part of site owner group of a particular site. That means this user has owner permission on the complete site. And by default, he will have owner permission on the list and the document libraries of this site. But my requirement is I do not want to give him owner permission on the document libraries. I want to give him view only permission on the document libraries of this site. So in this scenario, we will break the permission inheritance between the site and the document library. We will use unique permissions on the document library. So this way, this user will have owner permission on the site. He will have owner permission on the list, but he will have view only permission on the document library of this site. He can modify the site content. He can delete this site. He can modify the list and the items of the list, but he will not be able to modify anything within the document library. Apart from this, we can further break the inheritance between a site, a list and its items. Let's assume we have a user who has owner permission on a list, but we can assign him added permission on the list items. Or if a user is part of site members group, he has added permission on a document library. We can assign him view only permission on the folders or the files within a folder. So this is also possible in SharePoint online. So when a site list or a document library is using the same set of permissions, those are defined on the site level. This is called permission inheritance. And when we have unique permissions assigned on the list or the document library, this is called breaking the permission inheritance. So now let's move to the SharePoint site and let's see how to manage SharePoint online site permissions. Before we dive deep into the permissions or before we learn how to manage the permissions in SharePoint, 
let's get a basic understanding of the SharePoint permissions. So this is a communication site. If you go to settings of this site and you click site permissions, here we can see three default groups, site owners, site members, and site visitors. Every SharePoint site that we create, be it a team site or a communication site, every site has these three groups. Now, if I expand these groups, we can see concepts user who is currently logged in is the owner of this particular communication site. We do not have any member within this site and we do not have any user added as site visitors. Now, if I go to document library of this particular site and within document library, if I go to settings, library settings, more library settings, and click permissions for this document library, we can see same groups here. And here it says this library inherits permissions from its parent. That means this document library is inheriting the permissions from this site. And if I click honor group, we can see the same user is added within the honor group. And we do not have any user in members and we do not have any user within the visitors group as well. Now you might be thinking the groups that we see here, it says site owners, site members and site visitors. But the groups that we see here, it says news members, news owners and news visitors. So all these groups are the same groups that we see here or the groups that we see on the site level. If you go to advanced permission settings of this particular site, you can see the same name of the groups, news members, news owners, and news visitors. So basically, the groups, those are created in the backend by SharePoint Online. These groups are created with the name of your SharePoint site. For example, my SharePoint site name is news and if I click settings, site permissions, these groups will be site owners, site members and site visitors. But at the back end, if you go to advanced permission settings or you go to any permission settings in the classic view, in that view, you will see the groups with name of your SharePoint site. So the groups that you see here and the groups that you see in the site permissions are same. This is done so that the groups can be easily identified based on a particular site. Likewise, if I go to another site, which is a team site, and if I click settings, site permissions, we can see same groups here as well, site owners, site members, and site visitors. But if I go to advanced permission settings on this team site, we can see the three groups, but the name of the group is finance members because the name of my site is finance. So at the site level or in the front end, we will see site owners, site members and site visitors groups. But at the background or within the classic view of SharePoint permissions or within advanced permission settings, we will see site name members, site name owners and site name visitors. In the next video, we will learn how to manage site permissions in SharePoint Online. I will practically demonstrate to you how to manage site permissions on a team site and on a communication site. We will also learn how to manage permissions on a team site that doesn't has a Microsoft 365 group. And we will also learn how to bypass Microsoft 365 group membership. So that is all for today. If you learned something new from this particular video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, and if you have questions or suggestions, feel free to write them in the comments below. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.